Resin crafts have been so popular lately, so I knew I wanted to create something with resin. I found this incredible one on Amazon. It's non-toxic, it's bubble-free, and I'm also going to be using a couple of these molds as well, which are perfect for little coasters and some dried flowers, which I also found on Amazon. All the products will be linked below for you guys. But what you're going to want to start off by doing is actually pouring out equal parts of your resin and your hardener. So I just used two different cups to make sure that I have a very similar amount. And these red solo cups are actually quite nice because you can use the lines on the inside kind of as a gauge for the marking of the resin. And once those are all measured out into their cups, you're actually going to want to pour one of the cups into the opposite one to make our resin mixture. So just make sure that you try to scoop out as much from the cup that you're working with and pour it into the opposite cup. That way this is properly stirred and you're going to want to stir this for about three minutes and make sure to wear gloves and also stay in a well-ventilated space or use a mask when working with resin just to ensure that you're not breathing in any of the fumes or you're touching the material. Uh, and then what I wanted to do was add a little bit of glitter. So I found this one in my stash. It's a gold glitter. Now I thought that what I added here was a small amount of glitter, but I added so much. I don't know why I thought that I added a small amount, but I added a lot. So when you are working with glitter and resin, make sure to start off small and kind of increase from there and don't go dumping in a huge amount like I did because I had a ton of glitter in mine, but it ended up looking incredible. So next what I did was I actually poured like a base coat of resin in the bottom of each of the coasters. So just something that would allow my flowers to stick as I place them in and I dropped in my dried flowers now of course you could dry your own flowers if you want to but this project was like very last minute in my head and I just wanted to go ahead and order some so I ordered these ones and I'll link them below for you guys and I kind of just randomly placed them around the resin coaster and then I topped off the coaster with another layer of resin now your flowers will move a little bit because it's such a liquidy consistency but you can go back in with a toothpick or a wooden dowel or whatever you have on hand just to kind of maneuver your flowers and leave back into their position you're gonna want to let this cure for about 24 hours and once they are cured it is so satisfying taking them out of the mold so you're just gonna pop them out they super easily come out as you can see here they're so shiny sparkly they're just really fun unique coasters And I couldn't just stop there. I needed to add a border of brass paint. So I picked out my gilding paint from Craftsmart, which I love using. And I just grabbed a dainty paintbrush to paint the edges of all of my coasters. And I feel like this just really finished them off. It gave them kind of like a completed border and also overall just made them look like they were dipped in metal, which just elevates the overall look of these coasters. So have fun with these. They're super cute and fun. next project is the definition of vibey for sure. We are going to be starting off with two two liter bottles. Now my friend James actually has a lot of these in his music room. They're like hanging up clouds that flicker different lights. They're so fun and unique and different and I think they're perfect for a kid's room as well. So what I started off by doing was actually cutting off the top of both of my two liter bottles and I'm using one of these battery operated string lights. I don't know why I could not say that. Some battery operated string lights and I'll link the exact ones that I used below but you're just going to want to shove these inside of one of your bottles and then go ahead and place your second bottle over the top and kind of maneuver these into each other to create this long tube shape. This is going to be kind of the encasement for our lighting and over the top of this we're going to be adding kind of our cloud material just to make it look nice and fluffy and like a cloud. So I went around the edges and added a little bit of hot glue just to secure those two bottles together and make sure that they did not come apart. And of course we're going to want to add a hanger for this so I went ahead and I grabbed this thin white strip here now if you have clear fishing line that's even better but the more translucent or the more thin that you can get your strand the more it looks like the clouds gonna be floating so I went ahead and I glued this onto the left and right side of the bottles and then all you have to do from here on out is just cover your entire bottle with polyfill and I used hot glue just laid down a nice base of it kind of pulled out clumps from my bag of polyfill and just placed them on top now do keep in mind that this kind of material is very easily to be ripped apart so just 
kind of be careful with it and glue it together as much as necessary but in the end it works out really simply and easily and I also do think that the ones that are in James's studio were actually hairsprayed after to kind of make all the polyfill stick to itself if that makes sense I didn't end up hairspraying mine personally however that's totally an option you can go for as well to kind of coat it and kind of make it a little bit harder as well and more durable so I coated this completely and then once you're done you could actually hang this up and just use the remote controller from the string lights to turn it off and turn it on and it's a really fun nighttime lamp slash light that you could put in your bedroom or wherever you want to kind of style this. A few weeks back on Pinterest, I saw these super cute face trinket trays, and I was like, I could totally recreate something like this for sure, and I wanted to put my own little twist on it as well. So I went ahead and I grabbed some white oven bake clay, and I put it on top of some parchment paper with my rolling pin, which I use strictly for clay, and I'm going to be rolling this out into the shape of a face. You can kind of maneuver the clay with a pin however you want, so I rolled it out into this kind of like rounded diamond shape, and then once I got my generic shape, I just went around the edges and pinch them with my finger to create like a little lip on the edge so it seemed more like a bowl slash tray as opposed to just a very flat piece of clay and I love the way this ended up turning out however you can see that there's some finger indents in there I suggest just rubbing them out with your finger it kind of works really great if you just mush the clay and fill in those indents and then once I was done with that I wanted to create a thin little strip like a little snake of clay I guess you could say which we are going to be using to add all of our details so I created this really thin strip which I then went ahead and created the first eyeball with and the eyeball actually connected to the nose I really love the look of like minimalism line art especially when it comes to these kind of face sculpture shapes so I went ahead I added the nose and the eye and then I popped in a couple of eyelashes as well which I thought was a cute little addition I kind of referenced this exact tray off of one I saw on Pinterest, which I will link below for you guys as well. And then I also wanted to go in with some lips, so I just created these off the top of the clay so I can shape them however I wanted them to be. And then I placed them on top, and you just want to slightly press these in just to make sure that the lips are connected to the base of the tray. And then I also added a little slit down the center as well. And once you're done adding these pieces, that was all I wanted to add to this tray. Super simple and minimal. You're just going to pop this in the oven for about 20 minutes or so, depending depending on the thickness of your clay tray. Pull it out and that finishes off your tray. save my favorite project for last. I've been wanting to recreate these kind of shaped candlesticks for so long and I came across this video by Katie Bookser and she shared a tutorial on how to do it and I had to recreate them myself as well. So I'll link her tutorial for you guys because it was super helpful but I started off by going ahead and grabbing a tall like vase or whatever you have that will fit your candlestick inside of there and soak your candlesticks in warm water for 15 minutes. Make sure that it's not hot but that it is just warm and then once you pull them out of that water they're going to be very very malleable and it's a very weird feeling because they're not sticky at all or waxy nothing transfers to your fingers but they're super moldable which is amazing so I just kind of molded this first one here which was a yellow one into a really cool shape like a twisty squiggle I guess you could say I just thought it was a fun take on your traditional straight candlestick and I love the way that these add just a little bit of personality to a space and then going into style number two, for this style I pulled it out of the water and I'm going to be flattening the wax down with a rolling pin. So I'm actually flattening everywhere that the water was touching the candle and softening up that wax. I'm going to be flattening it with the rolling pin. So that's exactly what I did. Just make sure to never go all the way down to the bottom because you still do need that base at the bottom to stick into your candle holder. So as you can see here, I'm flattening it out and trying to just make it as even as possible, flipping it over, doing the same thing to the opposite side. And then once you have it to your desired kind of flatness I just went ahead and twisted it and that's all you have to do it kind of creates this really cool corkscrew vibe which again is just such a funky vibey element you could add this to a bedroom bathroom wherever you want it to go and that's style number two Popping a couple more candles in, we are going to be using these two for style number four, but for style number three, I just grabbed this yellow one here, and I wanted to actually create a full knot out of this. I thought a knotted candle would look so cool, however, the candlestick was not long enough, so I ended up kind of creating this roller coaster loop vibe.
And last but not least, for style number four, we're actually going to be using two candles for this one. And with our first candle, you're going to want to kind of imagine that it's going to be standing up on its own. So this type of candle will not be put in any form of candle holder. So you're going to want to create a base that is substantial enough to hold up your candle. So I'm kind of creating this C shape on the bottom, which then will connect to our other C shape, as you can see here. Once they're connected, it will create this really unique kind of squiggly double ended taper candle, which is really fun. And I just pop these in the fridge for about an hour to cool them down. Now I figured I can just go in with a lighter and kind of light one of the ends and that way it would melt and then I could melt it to the other one and it would be perfect to go. But that was not the case. The wax actually dried super quickly. So all I did was I just super glued them together. And I think the seam would have been a little bit more seamless if I wouldn't have actually burnt the first one first because it kind of rounded off those edges a little bit. But once you do super glue them, it is perfect. It looks amazing. And that finishes off all of these kind of funky new candle shapes. Thank you.